Hi guys and welcome to my channel. So I have this teeny tiny sketchbook. As you can see, it is three inches by one and a half inches. That is so teeny tiny. I saw this at Epcot. I recently visited Epcot with the amazing Chloe Rose art and Monique Renee art, who I love so much. And it's just so exciting to like be able to hang out with them. Like it just makes me so happy. But when we were in Epcot, we found this really cute little pavilion and in the pavilion, they had these teeny tiny sketchbooks and I thought they were just beyond cute. And I knew that I needed to get one so that I could draw in it and draw miniature things and show you guys because it sounded fun. So I bought this teeny tiny little sketchbook, which how cute is it with like the little clasp? I love it so much. Um, but in the teeny tiny sketchbook, I decided that I wanted to draw a teeny tiny self-portrait because I tend to do self-portraits kind of throughout my artistic career. I've kind of always gone back to doing some self-portraits as I go. It's just like easy, like an easy way to practice realism, if that makes sense. So I have, and it's like nice because I can see how my art progresses, but also kind of like how my face progresses, like as I get older and as my face changes and things like that. So it's kind of really cool to do repeated self portraits throughout my life. But what I decided to do for this specific self portrait is I just worked in pencil because I wasn't sure that this paper was going to take paint or anything very well. And I thought pencil would be the easiest thing to get in all of the details because it's so, it's just so small. For a reference, I had this little like selfie that I took when I first got my hair dyed. And so I used that, but I went ahead and opened it in a photography program, just like on my phone. And I turned it into black and white. I actually used one of their filters instead of just dropping the black and white, because that way I could kind of go through and see which one gave me the most contrast. And then I boosted the contrast a little bit more even and that is going to give me a much easier reference for when I'm working in black and white. I really recommend that if you're working in black and white that you photo edit your reference to also be black and white. It really helps you see like the different shades versus when you're working from color it can be really confusing with all of the different like tones and colors that are in there. So definitely recommend doing that if that's not something that you already do. But that's what I was using for my reference. I thought about doing just like a self portrait from life, but it just seems like a lot of effort. Like I already, I already felt like I was challenging myself enough by doing realism in a teeny tiny sketchbook. And I was like, okay, we're fine. So I haven't, I feel like I haven't tried to do more of a realistic drawing in quite some time. And this was hard <laughs> and it kind of like, it was, really weird for me too because I used to just like be able to do realism like that like it wasn't really an issue for me it was kind of the thing that I felt most comfortable with just kind of drawing from references and photos which makes sense and this one I really struggled with and I think it's just because I'm out of practice I actually drew almost half of this on a previous page and then I realized that I had actually lost half of the footage because the camera turned off part way through and I was using my boyfriend's camera which I am not as used to and I didn't realize and I honestly lost about 30 minutes of footage and it was the majority of the face it's like a sketch and then it's like a face so I was like okay I'm gonna have to redo this and it's so small it's not really a big deal so I redid it and that actually helped because I had kind of figured out a couple things about like technique in terms of starting everything out that helped me out a lot more in the second one so maybe I should have done some more warm-up sketches before I did this I feel like warm-up sketches are something I always forget to do and I think they're act they're they're really useful. Like they really do get you in the mindset of drawing. So I, I think I don't know. I think they're really useful. But basically, I did find myself struggling quite a bit with portraiture, and so I 
think that what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a Skillshare class, which shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I so appreciate it. Skillshare, Skillshare, Skillshare is like legitimately a huge supporter of my channel and I've learned a huge amount through their programs. They have so many different classes taught by so many different artists on literally everything that you can think of. Marketing, photography, fine art, illustration. There's so much stuff. You can learn so many different things from it. And an annual subscription is like less than $10 a month if you do it annually. So definitely way cheaper than an art school or anything like that. So the class that I'm thinking about taking is by Gabrielle Bricky and it's called Start Drawing Techniques for Pencil Portraits. And her art is so gorgeous. Like look at these portraits. I'm just like, I wish my tiny portrait looked like that. And even the class projects, which there's like class projects and stuff, they're beautiful. So I really want to take this class after doing this and being like, oh, okay, my portrait or skills are not up to where I want them to be. But that said, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you are interested in taking that class, there is gonna be a link in the description and you can get a free two month trial, take the class, see how it goes, see what you think. But yeah, so, portraiture class, want to take a portraiture class. This was really, really difficult. I think that when you're doing portraiture, it's genuinely like proportions are huge, but one of the biggest things is getting like the proportions of their individual face, right? Because everyone has different internal proportions. So it's not just the exact same as drawing, you know, the ideal female proportions or whatever. Like Everyone has slightly different proportions for their head. Like some people have larger foreheads, some people have larger chins, some people have small chins, you know what I mean? So everyone is slightly different and trying to capture all those little kind of imperfections is difficult. And those like imperfections are what makes us look like us. They make us look unique. So I had a hard time with a couple of things. The face shape was quite difficult for me, just trying to get the chin like long enough, but not too long, if that makes sense. It was very easy to make it too short or too long. The eye shape, especially the eye that I'm working on right now was so ridiculously difficult for me. I, I don't know why that specific side was so difficult, but I just struggled so much on it. And I have slightly hooded eyes. And so just trying to capture that specific shape was really difficult. But without that, the eyes didn't look like my eyes, if that makes sense. So the eye shape was definitely one of the integral things. But I think the thing that I find makes portraits of me, self-portraits of me look the most like me is my nose. And I think that's pretty common for a lot of people. Our noses tend to be a pretty individual feature of our face. And I, as far as like my nose goes, I have like my nose goes, huh, I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Um, I have a slight like dimple at the very tip of my nose. And then I have a really slight little like it's, not, it's like a bump, but it doesn't feel like a bump really, but it's just very slight, like on the bridge of my nose. And then the top of my nose kind of dips in pretty sharply. So when you're drawing that from the front, there's a lot of different like shadows that are created that I felt like I needed to get perfectly right in order for that to look like my nose. <laughs> so that was definitely, I think the nose was the hardest part. Um, although I did spend the longest time on this right eye. I mean, it was ridiculous. Just watch this. Like I spent so like I erase it and I draw it and I erase it and I draw it and I erase it and I draw it. And it's just, it's ridiculous. It, it gets more ridiculous as this video goes on. Just my attempts at getting the right eye correct. One of the other things that I struggled with, with the eyes was I kept wanting to draw them and also most of the facial features, but especially the eyes so much bigger than they are in real life. And I think a huge part of that is down to when you're drawing more like cartoony or semi-realism, the eyes are probably one of the biggest things that gets emphasized. And so like my instinct is to just draw them larger. And it was so hard to keep drawing them smaller, especially on such a small piece of paper. Like I, I felt like my, my hand kept falling off the edge and it like made it hard to control what I was doing. And 
obviously it's like harder to see because like you know like it's so small so I just wanted to put my head right in front of the paper which obviously I couldn't do because I was trying to film this video but definitely a lot of challenges but some things that I did find really really helpful other than kind of loosely laying out the proportions at the beginning was my teeny tiny eraser my teeny tiny eraser literally saved my butt so many times during this portrait it made it so much easier to go back in and add in those highlights where I needed, especially like on my nose and around the corners and of my eyes, like kind of where the inner corners of my eyes are. It made it so much easier because I could just really get into those fine details and I could also use it to kind of soften up edges and lift the pencil a little bit so I could get more of like, like if a line was too harsh, I could soften it out. So definitely... If you're doing portraiture, have some little stick erasers because I'm telling you, they make life so much easier. The other thing that I was really trying to get right was my smile. So I don't have like perfectly straight teeth by any stretch of the imagination, uh, especially my, my canines are decently pointed. So, and I have two chips in the front of my teeth. One was when I got hit in the head by a basketball, which was super fun. And the other, I was literally over a jam jar staring down at these like mini strawberries and my grandmother came up behind me and was like boo and my head straight it goes like straight like <laughs> down into the edge of the jam jar so anyway I have two chips in the front of my teeth that was a tangent but that part I really wanted to get right because it, it, when I smile that's like very distinctive and that's a huge part of what makes me look like me. So normally I feel like I try to kind of like cheat the teeth, like teeth are probably one of my least favorite things to draw because it's so easy to make them look absolutely terrifying. So I always like to like kind of cheat the teeth and like just try to kind of like make them as nondescript as possible, but I really couldn't do that with this portrait. So yeah, proud of myself for pushing through that. And I actually think they turned out okay. The hair was my favorite part, obviously. I love drawing hair. I love painting hair. I, I, I don't love doing my hair very much. I'm not that great at it, but, but like the drawing part very much enjoy. So with the hair, I kind of worked in blocks. So I really lightly sectioned out where the different like locks of hair were. Uh, my hair was curled in the picture and it was distinctly, it was decently separated into these like individual curls. So that made it a lot easier to be honest when I was kind of sketching that out. And then I just used, I mean, pencils are so effective for hair because you can really get these fine lines, but you just want to make sure that they kind of taper at the end and blend in and that you're not using too many or too little, if that makes sense. Like I always try to use more at the top where it's darker and less at the bottom and also try to create some variation within the chunks. Like you want to have some longer lines that are darker and some kind of shorter lines. If anyone wants a tutorial on drawing hair, let me know because I might actually feel okay doing that, like drawing or painting hair. Would you prefer like a tutorial on each or one tutorial that covers both or like, not, I don't know, just let me know if any of those sound interesting to you. Again, my eraser coming to the rescue as I struggle with this eye. I mean, like it's honestly ridiculous. And looking back on it now through the video, even like half the eyes I drew weren't bad so like I, I I think part of it is just being super self-critical and you get stuck into this loop where it never looks right to you and it's good I think in those times to kind of jump and do something else and move around the picture and I'd done that quite a few times but this eye was just the bane of my existence so we're just gonna leave it at that but I I think it worked out okay in the end and overall I think this portrait looks decently like me it's definitely not photorealism it doesn't look exactly like the reference but I do think I captured kind of the essence of what I look like I think that if you look at it you can tell that it's me so that's kind of the important part so I'm pretty happy with it and especially for all the like challenges I felt like I faced especially the teeny tiny notebook I'm pretty excited by my teeny tiny portrait so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found it fun and enjoyed seeing the teeny tiny portrait and maybe you're gonna be inspired and go do a miniature as well and how did those people in the olden days do those like tiny miniatures it's beyond me I am so so impressed so yeah 
Uh, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much. If you like this video, leave a comment, subscribe, thumbs up, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a great rest of your day. Bye guys. <laughs>